In this lesson, we are going to discuss includes in PHP. All right, what does the includes include? Well, an include is used to load up another file, another PHP script, so that any code within it can be used from the main script. Okay, so it's pretty much cut and pasting, right? Uh, not exactly. That would be something you do from an editor. Okay. What this does is it allows you to reference a, an external file and bring that into your script, but um, at runtime. Oh, so the, okay. So it's not actually going to be putting the actual code on that particular page. No, it's not page. going to cause code to appear in one script. Okay. It's going to allow you to, when the script is run, behind the scenes it includes that code into the script and oh, executes it. Oh, I see. It. So it's just going to be looking at it then. That's right. Okay. So, let's take a look at how we go about using an include. All right. I'll create a, and for this example, we're going to need two files, of course, because we have to have one and then include a second file. Okay. So, let's make an a.php and a b.php. Okay. For the first blank page, we'll create new HTML document, clear everything out, mm -hmm. and we have some PHP takes. This will be our a.php. Okay. So, we're going to set this to include a file, and the syntax is to simply say include and then specify the file which mm -hmm. you wish to include. Oh, where is it going to be coming from? That's right. Okay. Technically, this the file name is encapsulated in a string. Okay. So just keep that in mind that you have to use the quotes when including a file. All right. So we're going to include b.php, and that'll be it for a for the time being. So we can go ahead and save this out, call it a.php, and there we go. So let's create our second script, our b.php file. Get another blank document, mm -hmm. clear everything out, start our PHP tags, and this one we can say simply do an echo. Mm -hmm. We'll say that we are, I don't know, let's see, in B dot PHP. Okay. Or from, I like from better. Okay. So we simply echo from B dot PHP. Okay. And we'll save this as B dot PHP, and there we go. Okay. Now, one thing to look at here is, well, let's go ahead and test this, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay. So we're back in our web browser. We're going to run a.php, uh -huh. and, and ooh, it is, in fact, B. working. PHP. Look at that. So let's jump back into code for a minute. Yeah, and that, of course, is not written anywhere on the A page. That's right. all from the B, so. In a.php, all we run is an include. Mm-hmm. But we get something that was run from b.php. Uh, okay, I see. Now, a few considerations for all of this to work. Mm -hmm. First is where exactly do we get these files from? Mm -hmm. um, like, what folder do we, do we put them in? We saw a second ago we put the files in the same folder, right. which seems to make sense. You can right, yeah. It's going to be the same spot. What if you wanted to look at all the valid locations where you could include from? Okay. To do that, we're going to take a look at our old PHP info page. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm going to open a new um, window and load up phpinfo.php from the previous lessons. Okay. Now, if we take a look in here, let's search for include and look for include path. So uh, here we go. Right down include there. path is set to dot, then colon, then a directory on our C drive. Uh -huh. What this means, uh, let me copy this back out to where you can read it more easily. Okay. And just temporarily paste it here. Okay. So what this means is this is a setting from our PHP any file. It's the include path setting. Mm -hmm. We have that value set using... Uh, values separated by semicolons. Mm -hmm. So we have a dot, so, and then we have our C directory. So we have two locations that are currently valid include paths. Mm -hmm. The dot represents current location, okay. meaning current location to this script. This is a.php. So if we go looking for things in, in dot, that means current location. Look for b.php in the same location a is in. And the other valid location is the uh, the folder on the C drive. Ah, I see. That's why it's working, though, is because we're including from here. Okay. Now, another consideration is the uh, the other file that you include. When you notice I went and put the PHP tags, mm -hmm. which might seem kind of odd. Over here, we've already started a PHP tag. Mm -hmm. We've run an include, so why is it that we have to add the PHP yeah, tags Yeah, how come you have to have more if you're just going to put that right there between those PHP tags? Let's delete them out and see what happens. Save and go here, switch back to our a.php, mm -hmm. run this, and wow, look at that. Wow. We did get something from b.php. All this is from b. Yeah, but it actually physically says echo on there. And This is because when you run and include, uh -huh. the parser drops back into HTML mode. Oh, I see. Okay, because it doesn't have the PHP tags on it anymore. Right. And this has an advantage. This gives you one um, interesting ability. Let's say you have your site laid out mm -hmm. in such a way that your website features a sidebar somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
and that sidebar has no need for any dynamic code whatsoever. Right. Uh, just HTML would be fine. That means let's you could make a sidebar.php, mm-hmm. put all your code there, but emit PHP tags, and that would work just fine. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nice that it works that way because that gives you the option. You can have the included file act as though it was just HTML, right? or you could go ahead and start some PHP tags and put PHP back into its normal parsing mode. Ah, I see. So, just something to be aware of. Okay. Now, um, one last thing in the way includes work is the included file does not have to be .php. Okay. For example, we could say do a save as on this and call it b.inc, another common extension for if you're going to have a file that is meant to only be included. Uh-huh. It's not a requirement. It's just a, uh, a practice that a lot of people follow. Okay. So, we save that out as b.inc and change our first A file to b.inc. Let's also change it so we can see that we are, in fact, in a different file. And run. And look at that. So, yeah, it works just fine. Parsing and everything oh, works just fine. Cool. So, just something to be aware of. If you make, uh, let's say you make a configuration file. Okay. And it's meant to be included. Um, you can save it with the .inc just for yourself. So you can tell at a glance, oh, I'm using that. It's meant to be used in conjunction with another file. Okay. Oh, I have a question. What's that? Okay. Can you include a file from B that will include a file from A? See me and have them refer back to each other. Back and forth from each other. With like, mm-hmm. say the A file wants to use B at the same time that B is trying to use A. Actually, that will work, uh-huh. and that's very bad to do. Okay. So if you were to say in this file, we're in B, and we want to include A.php, that's what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. That will work. Mm-hmm. But here's what happens. All right, we do our echo, and we include A.php. Okay. Well, here we are. What, is it, what do we do in A? We include B. Well, okay. What do we do? Echo, include, include A. a. So and we have just created a really f- weird form of loop in this and case. And it would just be endless. So, yes, it will include back and forth. And the problem that, that this brings up is this is very hard for PHP to handle. Ah. Um, it generates a really interesting error, which can result in some very odd results. Depending on your server setup, it could range from something as simple as an unexpected end of document, mm-hmm. or it could potentially crash your web server process. I see. So this should be avoided, um, okay. as it can cause some things which may require that you restart your server. Okay. Um, just something to keep in mind. I see. And a simpler form of that is possible as well. Let's say we're working in A.php by itself. Mm-hmm. We change it to say include A. Mm-hmm. We're doing the same thing. We're including ourselves over and over again. Ah, and I that see. will generate the same problem. So, with that now, let's take a look at something else. What, what about variables? How would variables work in includes? Like if you want to include a variable from a different file. Right. Let's say that in working at A, we had a, a variable. Mm-hmm. We defined maybe dollar $A mm-hmm. and set it to some value, like weasels. Haha, <laughs> weasels. So now we're working on, so we've included B, all this is being executed, and let's see, what is the value of dollar $A? So we'll say and dollar $A is, and let's concatenate out to dollar $A and see what that does. Okay. Oh. And we apparently left one of our ah, problem see, things well in. Th- that's the bad thing you were speaking of. Oh, yeah, there's, and I left that in include. Yes. <laughs> and as you can see in our case, ours is fairly able to recover. Nothing yeah. incredibly bad happened. We do have pretty powerful stuff, though. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess that was kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> if we run again. There you go. So, where this is some code from B, mm-hmm. and dollar $A is weasels. Ah. So it did, in fact, work. The variable tran- variables transfer over. I guess. And that is common behavior. As long as you follow the rules of linear execution in that the variable should exist mm-hmm. before you attempt to echo it, otherwise you'll get uh, an un- or a notice saying that you have an undefined variable. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Um, and, of course, it would work the other way. If we're in B, we can make a, uh, a dollar $B variable, set it to any value we want, mm-hmm. like 5, go back to our main script, and echo out dollar $B. And I'm going to throw an HTML line return I for that. And let's take a look at some things. So what would happen in this case? It looks like we're about to echo out B. Mm-hmm. We run. Oh. And so we get undefined variable. So we go, let's say, all right, we want to start tracing this down. Exactly what went and wrong. And even tells you that it's in B in the D. So yeah, undef- undefined yeah. variable B in the file a.php. Uh, so let's I take a look at a.php. So now here's a really interesting thing that you get into, and this isn't really technically uh, something to deal with PHP. Mm-hmm. This looks fine. That should be completely right. fine, but it's yeah. undefined. Let's look back over here. Nothing looks wrong here. We're defining it. But look what we did. 
Check this out. Oh. Go Live is telling us that we haven't saved B at PHP. I got we you. got a little carried away. We said B, and then immediately jumped to A, check that and save. I and see. we forgot to save B. And this is just a common problem you could run into as you get mixed up in what file you're working in. Especially if you're starting to reference from, like, you know, five or six different files jumping back and forth. Yeah. But why would it care? I mean... You know, why would it care that if it's if you have that open from that file, how come you have to have yeah, how come you have to save that? Because as far as GoLive and uh -huh. PHP are concerned, these are two independent files. Oh, okay. Problems only okay. occur when they're used in conjunction. Basically, we're using a version of B mm -hmm. before we wrote this line. Oh, I see. So, so it still thinks that you're trying to write stuff in there. And, right. It's saying uh, it's basically got a version of P that simply doesn't have that. Right. Back in A, we're now referencing an undefined variable. I got you. Okay. So save all our files, get everything up to date. And there you go. There we go. Cool. So that's a few considerations with variables as well as the importance of saving all of your files to keep everything in sync. <laughs> Always. <laughs> so one last thing I want to take a look at is what would happen if we were to uh, attempt to include a file that did not exist. Ah, Let's yes. try to include c.php. Okay. And see what happens. And I'm going to follow up with that and say last line throw a new line character in it, just to show um, how this is going to work. So mm -hmm. we're going to include a file that doesn't exist, and then attempt to echo out last line. As a matter of fact, I want to keep that um, .inc. Just make sure that we have some file that should not exist. And, and check it ooh, out. warnings, yay! So, uh, two warnings, actually. We get one where PHP physically attempted to open the file. Mm -hmm. Later, we have the failed uh, opening for inclusion. And here's another interesting thing. It goes ahead and shows us the include path. It's just trying to be helpful in saying, all right, this file was not found. Here's where we looked ah. for the file. And we can say that here we have the current folder and that C folder. Once again, defined in our PHP any file. So that, uh, that's the behavior of include. There is one other um, form of include called require. It will do the same thing, same rules for including the file, same rules about the tags and variables and all. Mm -hmm. But... Here, let me type this out. Inquire. It works differently in that if a file does not exist, it will trigger a fatal error and halt the script's execution. As oh, we can see, wow. fatal error, and we do not get to that. This is the last line um, echo. I gotcha. And where this could be useful is, let's say you have a very critical script that maybe works with the service file system or database, mm -hmm. but it's dependent on maybe a setting script to have some critical what it's supposed to be updating. If, that, if it's really that critical, you'd probably want to do a require just so you don't um, attempt to include your non-existent settings and then go muck with the database and file system with some non-existent values. Yeah. That, that could cause problems. I got gotcha. you. But um, that, uh, that's pretty much all we need to cover in the include list. And really, it's, it's fairly simple. It's just a method where you can break up your um, scripting system such that you have external modules or files. And I can see where it would come in handy because if you have you know, a really giant script that you're writing, you don't want that to be, you know, four miles long. You can break it up so that you can just keep writing includes so that or, the main script will be just... Right, or if you have, like, let's say a site that is built out of many scripts, uh -huh. but you have common pieces throughout your site, uh -huh. that way you don't keep retyping those pieces of code or HTML. Store them in one central location and then reference them throughout the rest of the site. I see. So with that, that is going to wrap up this lesson. Okay.